Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome to episode 3 of how to edit videos. So in part 1 and 2 we talked about what video editing is and how to actually get your clips onto the computer and think about organization. But now let's actually dive into the program and arrange the clips and talk about how to get started making sequences and starting new projects. Alright, so we're finally inside the computer. Well, we're really here on my desktop and let's open up Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So whenever you launch the program, you should be started with this start menu where you can choose to open previous projects or start a new project. So this is what it looks like, recent files, and there's also some other settings for opening team projects and whatnot. But let's start a new project like you might be. Now this is probably the most confusing part when I was just starting out with Premiere was what is all this stuff? How do you start new projects and sequences and all that? So you can name it whatever you want. I'll name this one how to edit three and you can choose the location that it goes in and I'm going to leave all this stuff pretty much the same. You really don't need to mess with these settings unless you want to change the way that things are defaultly displayed, which you can always change afterwards if you need to. So I'll press OK and this will launch our new project and we'll see our empty Premiere Pro workspace. Now I do have a full separate tutorial called the basics of Premiere Pro where I try to go over basically every single panel and what these all do. So I'm going to link that in the cards and the end card in the description and I definitely recommend that you go check that out if you're unfamiliar with this workspace. But in this episode we're going to talk about how to import our footage and organize it, how to start a new timeline and sequence and kind of what the differences are. So first let's import some media. This is our media bin. No matter what video editor you're in you're probably going to have some sort of media bin. And there's a lot of different ways that you can go about organizing and finding footage to work with. My favorite and the way that I personally do it is I just go to wherever I have my footage. So here I have it in this external hard drive. By the way, since the last episode on how to organize footage, I have sold myself on purchasing a Samsung T3. So I'm trying that out here. It's pretty fast so far. So here I have my random assortment of clips and like we discussed in the last episode, if you had them all organized into a folder, you can highlight all the items that you need and just drag and drop them right inside of your media bin. Also, alternatively, you could search for things with the media bin through your desktop directory. So I've got 12 clips here. You can see there's 12 icons and you can see them in thumbnail view. You can also switch to a list view on the bottom left corner if that's easier for you to work. It gives you some information, but I personally like the thumbnail view. Now, I'm not the most organized person and most of the time I'm working on short clips for YouTube, so I kind of just leave everything all over the place. But if you are working on more detailed projects or you just want to be more organized, Premiere does give you some good tools to do that. For one, you can create different folders and bins in your project media to organize things. So if I press this button to create a new bin, you'll see it pop up here and I can name this something like all of my talking headshots. And then I could drag everything I need into this folder. And then I could create a new folder. I could do all of my B-roll or daytime shots from scene one and I could drag these certain clips that I want to organize in those bins inside of them and now you can see there's one item in each of these. Also you can select whatever clips you want and then right click on them and label them with a certain color. So if you want to use color organization you could do it that way. And when you're in list view you'll see them in different colors as well as when you drag them onto the timeline they'll appear a different color as well. But let's talk about timelines and sequences and how I just created that there. So in Premiere Pro, you have your project, which is your project with the workspace and all of the media inside it. But within your project, you can have many different sequences. And that's what's actually on the timeline for you to build out clips. So right now, we don't have a sequence open. And one way that you can create it is by going to File, New, Sequence. And here you can choose the settings that reflect the majority of the clips or the, the kind of clip that you're going to be working with. So there's all these sequence presets. So let's say I'm working with a DSLR 1080p with most of the footage shot in 24 frames per second. If I press OK, I can open that sequence or I can go to the settings and create my own custom size if I needed that for some reason. And when you press OK, you'll see that we've created our 1080 DSLR sequence that we can then drag our clips into. However, when I do that, if I drag some clips on that are different than the sequence, let's say I shot them in a higher frame rate for some slow motion clips, or they're just slightly different, it'll say there's a clip mismatch. Do you want to match the sequence settings or do you want to change the sequence settings to match to be the clip? 
So depending on what you need, if you know that you were going to do that 1080p24, then you could just keep the sequence the same. Or another way that you can create a new sequence is just by taking your clip and dragging it on the timeline. And when you do that, it will match the settings and dimension of the clip to create your sequence exactly to fit that. And you can see if I go to info here and highlight any one of these clips, it'll tell me what the settings of these clips are. So this is 30 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, and all of these other settings. And that's what the sequence is going to be. So that's usually the easiest way to do it, but you do have to be careful. For example, let's say you did shoot one clip in a bit higher frame rate because you wanted that specific clip to be slow motion. Just don't create the timeline off of that one slow motion clip because now the whole sequence is 60 frames per second. And when I drag normal clips on, that's not what I wanted. Create the timeline based on what the majority of the clips that you're working with are. So in this case, I'll just drag one of these 29 ones. And when you do have a slow motion clip, that's fine. You can just drag the 60 frame per second clip inside and then you'll be able to slow it down or interpret it to be slow motion. And I do have tutorials all about that. So whenever you do create a new sequence, you'll also see the sequence pop up in your timeline. And it might look just like the clip because it's just giving me a thumbnail of what's in the sequence. But you can see I can continue to add things onto this. And that is actually our full sequence. It's just named the same thing as what this clip that I first dragged on it was. But you can see the difference because this little icon here shows that it's a clip. This little icon shows that it's a sequence. And you can also use the preview scrubber to see that there's more than one thing in here. So I can double click and rename this. So I'll name it sequence one. And this is our timeline for sequence one. We can basically use this to build out the whole project piece by piece or however you like editing and constructing. And in this timeline is where we can go through and build our whole project. So what we have on the timeline is audio and video tracks. So Premiere Pro kind of splits them up symmetrically. So on the lower third, we have the audio and the top, we have the video tracks, V1, A1, V2. You can always right click here and add tracks. So if you want to add more, there's V4. That way you can drag multiple clips on top of each other and create more layered compositions, which you often need to do in more complex projects. But the cool thing about having a project open is you can create multiple sequences within the same project. So let's say I have this sequence. It's like the first scene or something. I can go to File, New Sequence and create a sequence that way. Or I can right click any one of my clips and choose New Sequence from Clip. And that'll open a new sequence. And you can see they're both here in the timeline window. I can go through them in tabs just like an internet browser. Or if I want, I can organize them in another way where I can keep them both open at the same time. So this could be a cool way to organize perhaps a rough draft. And once you finalize it, you could drag things onto the final draft. Or you could even break down your project into different scenes like part one, part two. And then let's say you're working on a third sequence or a new one. You can combine those full different project sequences together on another timeline. So you can drag these in just like they were video clips. So I can easily piece together sequence one, piece it together with sequence two. And that way you could build out different parts of the project and combine them in that way. I don't always work in that way, but it's kind of a useful thing to know. And that's also a very crucial thing to know about one project. You can edit multiple different things inside of it if you have all of the pieces of media that you need in that project. So basically you don't need to create new projects for every single sequence. You could have one big project with multiple different sequences inside of it and edit and work through things that way. So the level of organization is up to you and of course the needs of your project. Another final note about the project media bin is not only can you drag in video clips, you can also go to file new and there's different types of media that you can just build in Premiere from scratch. So black video, just a solid black video clip if you need that for some reason. Or you could do things like the color bars and tone or color mats, which are just solid color mats. So the media bin is not only for video clips. It's for any type of media, whether that's audio, pictures, or video. So you could always save your project and open it up at a later time. You can open up all the timelines that you're working with. But I'm going to leave it at that in this episode. So we talked about projects, the different sequences that you can build within projects. And then you can always go to sequence, sequence settings to see the different settings of your sequence and how you can build them from a clip. 
or if you needed it to be a certain size, like maybe for Instagram or something, you could change those dimensions and make your clips fit and crop within that. So again, I'm gonna save my project and let's get out of the computer for now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on below, check out the playlist to catch the other episodes and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future uploads. You can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho if you wanna reach out to me and stay tuned. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.